It has been a while since we have looked at a truly terrible horror movie on this channel, but it has taken something special to make me want to do a dedicated video on it. Now, I know I go and see a lot of bad looking movies with my friends at the cinemas. I saw Cats at its opening weekend back in 2019, and of course, I paid actual human dollars to see Morbius. But even for my standards, I was completely prepared to just skip over Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, because I feel like the poster told me everything that I needed to know about it. Like, I was completely content to just go my whole life without seeing this movie, but then all of my friends forced me to go and see it anyway, which I guess is payback for all of the terrible movies I've made them watch. So I'm here now to try and make that ticket money back. At least with Morbius, I have permanently added its morbing time to my vocabulary, and with Cats, I will never complain about any nightmare I have ever again because nothing my brain can conjure up will ever be as terrifying as that movie. But Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey is on a different level entirely. It was so insane that the only thing I knew for sure after getting back from it was that I had to talk about this for a video. Now, this movie is not actually available on streaming yet. I did think it was, but apparently it's still going through its theatrical run, so don't worry, you still have time to go and see it. But that does mean I'm going to have a bit of a hard time actually showing you anything from the movie. So please enjoy this high quality HD footage from 123movies.com. <laughs> Okay, no way. I have just found out that movie piracy is illegal, apparently. Uh, so I hope you really enjoy these same exact five shots from the trailer. So just as a quick rundown for those of you who aren't aware of this movie and think I'm going crazy. Yes, you did hear me correctly. This is a Winnie the Pooh horror movie that was released by an independent British film company. Now, I know what you might be thinking. Isn't Winnie the Pooh owned by Disney? Doesn't that make this copyright infrigerator? What the fuck? Is this allowed? What the fuck? Is that allowed? Well, surprisingly, no, actually. But before we can talk about the actual movie itself, I wanted to discuss why that is. Because to be honest with you, I find the whole story around this way more interesting than the actual movie. So Disney does technically own a version of Winnie the Pooh, but only the version that they made. The original classic book series that that Winnie the Pooh was based off of had the copyright for it expire in January of 2022. And that means that it gets sent off to this wonderful place called the Public Domain which means that technically nobody owns it anymore, which means that anybody can make their own interpretation of it with no legal repercussions. Most of the stuff in the public domain is super old, as you may expect. Things like Sherlock Holmes or any of Shakespeare's works, which is what has allowed for such incredible interpretations as Romeo and Juliet and Sherlock Gnomes. <laughs> now, I'm not a lawyer, obviously. <laughs> If you couldn't tell. So I'm not super well versed in like the technicalities of it. I'm sure it's considerably more detailed than this, but copyright for the most part lasts a term of the entire original author's lifespan plus an additional 70 years. You know, just in case their ghost still wants royalties, I guess. And of course, copyright duration depends on what country you're in. There's like way more to it than that, but that's just like the basic outline. And so all of this brings us to Disney, who, as I'm sure we're all aware by now, are probably one of the greediest companies of all time when it comes to protecting their copyright. Did you know that once they wouldn't allow Spider-Man to be on a child's gravestone because it like diminished the brand of Spider-Man? That actually happened, by the way. But what not a lot of people are aware of is that they had a pretty significant hand in shaping the entire modern copyright system. Because this term of copyright used to be way shorter until Disney threw a tantrum and had it extended. Now, again, I'm not an expert. All of this is just taken from Google, but apparently back in like the 1700s, it was originally a period of 14 years that could be extended for another 14 if you wanted to. But not once, but twice since then has Disney made major changes to the copyright system. Both times because of the then imminent expiration of Mickey Mouse, of all things. Once in the 70s, where it became the entire author's life plus about 50 years, and then again in 1998, where at the time Mickey Mouse was set to expire in 2003, where they effectively changed it into what it is now, which is a really, really long time. But now we're here in 2023, and the original Steamboat Willie short is set to fall into public domain next year. So I'm giving Disney like a month, but just to clarify, that is not the current Mickey Mouse that we're all aware of, just the original version of it in that short. I'm pretty sure the modern one that we're all familiar with is still covered by copyright for a while yet, so unfortunately we're going to have to wait over a decade before we can get a shitty Mickey Mouse horror film. So yeah, we could be seeing a lot more stuff like this in the near future as more and more classic works fall into the public domain. I mean, this isn't even the first time this has been done, really. In 2004, there was a Pinocchio slasher movie and a Grinch horror film that was made last year that wasn't even legally licensed, so I'm really not sure how they got that one released in theaters. So Pooh is not the first 
first, and he definitely will not be the last. So, bringing all of this back to Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. With those set of legal requirements in mind, they were only allowed to use elements from the original 1926 book with the naked Winnie the Pooh. They couldn't even use Tigger because he's not in the original book, so I think they have to wait until next year to use him, which means he's definitely going to be in the sequel. And they also couldn't use Pooh's red shirt, as that's only Disney's version. But they kind of get around it with him wearing overalls and a red flannel shirt that in the poster is very conveniently covered up so you can't even tell the difference. It's a shame that with a character as iconic as Winnie the Pooh, they have a premise about as creative as a 2010's creepypasta. Their reasoning for why these cute Winnie the Pooh characters are now vicious killers is because they're mad at Christopher Robin for abandoning them as he got older, which caused them to nearly starve to death and having to resort to eating Eeyore. Pooh decided that in order to survive, the group must consume one of their dearest friends. And thus, Eeyore was no more. And so they make a vow to take revenge and always hate humanity, which reminds me of myself after watching this movie. I gotta admit though, that opening scene kinda got me. It's animated in like a storybook style to evoke the look of the original books, and I gotta admit it was pretty effective to me at least in being kinda creepy. I don't know whether that's because they're like cute Winnie the Pooh characters and that was like the child inside of me dying. It's probably where most of the budget that wasn't spent on advertising went. But then even though they appear in the opening scene, Rabbit and Owl aren't seen ever again in the entire movie. The only ones that appear in this one are Piglet and Pooh, so that was kind of a letdown to be honest. They're obviously saving them for the sequel, but like the fact that they don't even get mentioned throughout the entire thing is kind of weird. When I first saw the poster for this movie, I thought it was going to be like serial killers dressing up in like Winnie the Pooh themed costumes, but no, it is actually supposed to be Pooh and Piglet. <laughs> uh, I think the movie makes a point that they're supposed to be like half human, half animal hybrids or something, which apparently means that they are invincible terminators for 95% of the movie. There is some pretty violent stuff in here. I guess it is rated R here in Australia, so I don't really know what I was expecting, but you know, for a lower budget movie, I was pretty impressed by some of the practical effects, I guess. Uh, but then equally, they also resort to using like all of these horrific green screen YouTube effects that look like something I'd make as a joke. <laughs> Outside of the Winnie the Pooh theming though, to me the rest of this movie was kind of just a generic slasher. Christopher Robin does have a main role in the opening and ending of the film, but that's about it. His main contribution to the film is really just being strung up and tortured for most of the runtime. The rest of the story is on these random uni students who camp out nearby and get horrifically killed off one by one. Like, you have a cast of characters that are like set up in like five minutes and then just get killed extremely violently where more of the effort is put into violently murdering them than actually making any of them fun characters. There is literally a scene where Pooh calmly takes off a woman's top before he shoves her into a wood chipper. So you just really don't feel like a good person while watching it. Obviously, I'm not really the biggest fan of slasher movies. Like, I definitely understand the appeal, but they're just not really my thing in the horror genre. Uh, so maybe this movie is actually the greatest thing ever made. It's only like 80 minutes long though, which is like the minimum requirement to be considered a feature length movie. So I just couldn't shake that feeling of it being like a cynical cash grab, which to be fair, it wasn't exactly trying to be subtle about. <laughs> Obviously me and everyone else in the cinema went into it expecting it to be so bad it's good, but to me it just kind of took itself a bit too seriously to reach that level of like being fun that, you know, a Winnie the Pooh horror movie should be. All of that being said though, I think you definitely still can have fun with it. Like that didn't stop my cinema from thinking it was the funniest movie ever made. Everybody was laughing their asses off. There's something just really special about being in a cinema filled with people who all know the movie isn't going to be good and are just there to have have a good time and laugh at it. Especially this one girl in the back row who thought every time Pooh appeared on screen was the funniest thing she had ever seen in her life. So this movie got made for under a hundred grand, which for those who don't know like movie accounting, that is absolutely nothing. I would be very surprised if anyone even got paid. The mask that they used for Pooh in this movie, you can find on a prop website in the exact same color. They didn't even design or customize the main character of their own movie. They literally just bought them on the internet for like 600 bugs. But I was thinking about it, right? This movie has grossed about $3.3 million so far, which honestly really impressive for a lower budget movie. That may actually make this one of the greatest get rich quick schemes of all time. Because again, as I said before, the copyright for the original Winnie the Pooh book expired in January last year. And this movie came out just over a year later, which means they must have gotten on that shit like immediately. It's honestly inspired me to make my own get rich quick scheme so I never have to work a day in my life. All I have to do is amass a really small budget, 
I don't know where I'm gonna get 100k from, but I will figure that out. And then wait for the public domain rides to kick in on a popular beloved children's character. And then use like $20 to make a super cheap horror movie because people will see literally anything if it's a horror movie. Spend the rest on memeing the shit out of it on Twitter. And then make a million dollars, I guess. It's as easy as that. I promise you that if I make it another 120 years on this earth, you will be seeing the absolute best Peppa Pig slasher film ever made. I read on Wikipedia that the movie actually received an increased budget once it started getting like popular online. Obviously, because why wouldn't people obsess over a Winnie the Pooh horror movie? Which also led to them confirming a sequel before it even came out. Great. They are promising that the sequel was going to have five times the budget though, so guess who's going to be there day one. He's also said that he plans on doing horror movies based on other public domain works like Peter Pan and Bambi, and I'm beginning to think that public domain lore was a mistake. So, would I recommend Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey? Well, I mean, yeah, if you can get some friends around and get really, really drunk, <laughs> you'll probably have a good time. But yeah, I just really wanted to talk about it because I thought it was such an interesting case of like public domain lore. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to smash that like button like Piglet smash that girl's face in with a hammer and I will see you all next time.